You don't hear it coming. You don't see it on your radar. And by the time defenses start collapsing, it's already too late. The aircraft responsible is almost certainly the B-21 Raider. This is America's newest stealth bomber, shaped in secrecy for more than a decade and only now beginning to reveal itself. Unlike the giants it will replace, the Raider was born into an age of long-range missiles, satellite surveillance, and air defense networks that span continents. And in 2025, it's no longer a sketch on a drawing board or a mock-up hidden in a hangar. It's flying, it's testing, and it's preparing to rewrite the balance of global air power. The B-52 First flew before Elvis recorded his first song, and it still flies today. The B-1B was built for missions that ended before it matured. The B-2 is brilliant, but too rare to dominate. While America leaned on these aging icons, the battlefield changed. China laced the Pacific with radar chains, long-range missile batteries, and mobile launchers. What strategists call an anti-access area denial shield. Russia constructed its own dense belts of S-400s and S-500s, linked by sophisticated electronic warfare networks. Sending traditional bombers into that environment would be suicide like knights charging machine guns. The Air Force needed an answer. The B-21 Raider was conceived not simply as another bomber, but as a survivor, adaptable, affordable, and able to be built in numbers large enough to shift the balance. For over a decade, the Raider was little more than a whisper. It lived in rumors, grainy renderings, and official statements that concealed more than they revealed. The Pentagon released only glimpses, carefully staged rollout ceremonies, photos that blurred key details, vague promises of next-generation stealth. That curtain finally lifted on November 10, 2023. On a clear California morning in Palmdale, the first raider rose silently from Plant 42. To casual observers, it was simply a graceful flying wing cutting across the desert sky. To analysts, it was a thunderclap. For the first time since the Cold War, the United States had built and flown a brand new stealth bomber. In 2024, it shifted to Edwards Air Force Base, the proving ground of the X-Planes, where engineers began pushing it through every test imaginable. Climbs, low-level runs, structural stresses, stealth trials, every moment recorded and analyzed. Then in 2025, a second Raider joined the fleet. One prototype proves an idea can fly. Two prove it can be built again. Two meant parallel testing, production within reach, and the end of speculation. The Raider was no longer a rumor, it had become reality. A bomber. This secret can't just be parked on any ramp. It needs infrastructure as carefully designed as the aircraft itself. The Air Force chose Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota as the first operational home. Construction there has been immense. Vast climate-controlled hangars are rising to shield its stealth coatings from weather damage. Simulators are being installed to train pilots and crews long before they touch a real cockpit. Underground networks of secure communication cables are being laid to link the base directly to command centers in Washington. Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, long home to the B-2 Spirit, will also host raiders. So will Dias Air Force Base in Texas. The decision to spread the fleet across the Midwest was deliberate. No single strike could cripple America's bomber force. Edwards will remain the test hub, while Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma will handle depot-level maintenance, the kind of deep servicing that extends an aircraft's life for decades. What's being built is more than basing. It's a web of support designed to keep the Raider flying into the 2070s. At first glance, the B-21 looks quite like the younger sibling of the B-2. Both are sleek flying wings with no tail. But the resemblance ends there. Look closer, and the refinements reveal themselves. The Raider's inlets are flush and smoothed, 
swallowing radar waves before they can bounce back. Its exhaust is hidden deep within the wing, masking its infrared heat. Every edge, every seam is aligned extremely carefully to scatter radar returns across a spectrum of frequencies. The Air Force has confirmed Pratt and Whitney supplies the engines, but details remain tightly locked. What is known is that they are buried so deep within the wing that the aircraft's infrared signature is nearly erased. Stealth doesn't erase you from the sky. It muddies the picture until radars can't tell what's real. The radar advances this art even further. Where the B-2's delicate coatings demanded endless hours of maintenance after each flight, the B-21's composites and finishes are built for durability for daily operations. If the B-2 was a jewel, rare and fragile, the B-21 is a blade, forged to be drawn, used, and returned to the fight again and again. But stealth is only half the story. What truly makes the Raider dangerous is hidden inside its code. The Raider's most revolutionary feature isn't visible at all. It's the way it was engineered. From the beginning, the B-21 was a digital aircraft built around open systems architecture. That means it can be updated like software. Where older bombers require decade-long modernization efforts to add new systems, the B-21 can integrate upgrades in months. And this matters because adversaries like China and Russia roll out new radars and missiles every few years. If an aircraft can't adapt at the same pace, it risks obsolescence before maturity. The B-21 was designed with that reality in mind. It isn't frozen in 2025. It's a platform meant to evolve continuously. Whether it's electronic warfare suites, hypersonic payloads, or countermeasures to exotic technologies like quantum radar, the Raider can adapt at the speed of code. That flexibility ensures it's not only facing today's threats, but will remain relevant for decades to come. And what comes next could change modern air combat entirely. The B-21 is a symbol of ambiguity, a poker chip with two sides. In its nuclear role, it will be certified to carry the AGM-181 long-range standoff missile capable of slipping past defenses and striking from thousands of miles away. Together, bomber and missile form a deadly combination, stealth aircraft and stealth weapon. But the Raider is just as lethal in conventional missions. It can deliver precision-guided bombs, long-range cruise missiles, and soon hypersonic weapons able to overwhelm defenses with sheer speed. That dual role creates uncertainty. When a Raider takes off, no one knows if it carries nuclear or conventional arms. That uncertainty itself is power. Rivals are forced to assume the worst every time. Nowhere is the Raider more critical than the Pacific. The distances here are immense. Thousands of miles between bases, targets, and supply lines. Distances that shape every strategy. China has spent decades building its anti-access area denial fortress an interlocking web of radars, missile fields, and aircraft designed to push U.S. forces out of range. The Raider was built to pierce that shield. With the range to launch from the American mainland or island bases like Guam and the stealth to bypass the first and second island chains, it can slip into airspace thick with defenses. Once inside, it can dismantle command centers, neutralize all missile batteries, and carve corridors for fighters and drones to follow. But survival in today's skies isn't about a single trick. It's a stack of defenses. The Raider starts with stealth geometry, then layers on advanced electronic warfare tools that can jam radars or feed them false signals. Its communications use low probability of intercept waveforms, keeping it linked without giving away its position. Its systems are hardened against cyber attacks, a new battlefield every bit as dangerous as missiles. Most importantly, it's built to evolve. If new threats appear, advanced infrared trackers, experimental quantum radars, 
the B-21's architecture allows new defenses to be integrated quickly. It isn't simply a stealth aircraft. It's an aircraft designed to keep learning how to survive. The Raider's greatest fight may not be over the Pacific or Arctic. It may be in American factories. Building stealth aircraft has always been less like assembly and more like alchemy. The B-2 was supposed to see over a hundred built. Instead, runaway costs and political backlash cut it down to just 21 aircraft, each costing over $2 billion. The F-35, meanwhile, staggered through its early years with delays, cost overruns, and headlines that made it a poster child for Pentagon waste. Northrop Grumman swore the B-21 would be different. Its design was deliberately clean, no exotic curves, no fragile coatings that demanded surgery after every flight. It was built with modular parts meant to slot in like puzzle pieces, cutting down on the nightmare of handcrafted components. Digital engineering created a virtual twin to catch flaws before they ever reached the assembly line. And yet, in 2025, reality bit back. As the program shifted from hand-built prototypes in Palmdale to mass production, costs crept upward. Factories struggled with rare composites arriving in trickles, tolerances measured in thousandths of an inch where the slightest flaw could ruin a $700 million aircraft. Engineers spoke of the learning curve when every mistake is discovered the hard way, at full price. Congress noticed. Budget hawks warned of another B-2-style collapse. Generals argued delays left America leaning on bombers older than the pilots flying them. This is the tightrope the Raider walks. To field a fleet of 100, maybe more, it must prove it can be mass-produced without becoming a trillion-dollar cautionary tale. Every jet off the line isn't just a weapon, it's a political test. At Edwards Air Force Base, the Raider is being pushed in silence. Each flight generates terabytes of data, feeding into digital models that refine predictions. To the public, only brief footage is shown. Takeoffs, landings, a few elegant flybys. Behind the scenes, test pilots are stressing the aircraft to its limits. High-altitude climbs, low-level runs, stealth trials against the hardest radars. The arrival of a second prototype in 2025 signaled confidence. With multiple aircraft, engineers can run tests in parallel, accelerating the pace of discovery. Range, payload, radar cross-section. Those numbers remain classified, but secrecy itself is part of the weapon. Adversaries must assume the worst, never knowing how far the Raider can fly or how invisible it really is. Now nuclear certification is a long, deliberate process, more than loading a missile. It means layers of safeguards, fail-safes, and political sign-offs. The B-21 will likely enter conventional service first, with nuclear certification arriving later this decade. By then, the AGM-181 long-range standoff missile will be fully operational, paired naturally with the Raider. Together, bomber and missile create a system unmatched anywhere in the world. The ability to project nuclear force from halfway across the globe, with both aircraft and weapon designed to vanish from detection. Each new raider that enters service alters the balance of power. For China, it means their vast missile networks may not be enough. For Russia, it means even their newest S-500ES could be caught off guard. For America's allies, it's reassurance that U.S. air power is not ceremonial, but real. Capable of reaching anywhere, even against the hardest targets. Numbers will matter. The Air Force's minimum requirement is 100 Raiders, but some analysts argue 150 or even 200 may be needed to cover nuclear deterrence and conventional strike demands worldwide. Whether Congress funds that many is uncertain. But one thing is not. The first Raiders are here, and they will be operational before this decade ends. The B-52 gave America its wings during the Cold War. 
The B-2 proved stealth could tilt the balance of power. Now the B-21 Raider steps into that same lineage. An aircraft designed to slip into the world's most dangerous skies and hold control of the air where no other bomber could. If survival meant trusting one machine to get through, the choice would be simple. The Raider would already be overhead. But the story of America's next generation of air power doesn't end with the Raider. In the shadows, whispers speak of another machine. The F-47, said to be the first true sixth-generation fighter. In our next video, we'll ask, how much of that legend is real? Stay tuned.